I'd like to welcome my listeners to the Truth Sayer Report, hosted by Jeffrey Hawkins. The global mission of the podcast, the Truth Sayer Report, is to explore and examine historical events and how they shape current events and, most importantly, our lives. I will discuss a wide range of topics over the course of the series. I welcome your comments and your suggestions for future topics and areas of interest. Follow us at the following platforms. Email us at truthsayernews at gmail.com. Facebook, like our page, The Truth Sayer Report. Twitter, at Truth Sayer News. Today's topic, episode four, France and the United States, the Brotherhood. In the 1800s, France was one of the strongest and greatest empires in the world. Its greatest rival was England. They had participated in the war against one another many times, including the 100 Years War. They both wished to control the known world. Each had established colonies all around the world, including the Americas as well. However, the Americas had become quite fruitful and there was more to be had. England controlled the East Coast, which began to be known as New England. The greatest prize was New York City, named for York, England. France controlled the Louisiana Territory, which included the mighty Mississippi River, and now what represents one-third of the continental United States. Moreover, their crown jewel was New Orleans, named after Orleans, France, best known for Joan of Arc's victory over the English and as a great wine center of France. The British settlers and the new American-born were seeking independence. Secretly, France had agreed to support the revolutionary desires of the colonists. France supported their efforts with money, weapons, and most importantly, their navy. The rebels' determination and France's navy might proved to be too much for the British. The United States of America was born. This begins the brotherhood between France and the United States, a relationship which maintains to this day. The two established trade relations which became economically satisfying for both. Surprisingly, when the American Civil War breaks out, the Confederacy, the Confederate States of America, requests trade relations and military assistance from France. France rejects all requests and reaffirms its ties to the United States of America. In 1803, due to France's Napoleon Wars and the revolution in Haiti, the country is in desperate need for money. President Thomas Jefferson agrees to the Louisiana Purchase for $15 million. The French were truly appreciative of the cash infusion. In 1804, when the Haitians win the revolution, the French seek the help of their little brother again. The United States refuses to recognize Haiti's sovereignty or trade request. Moreover, the United States approves the naval embargo and reparations for France. In 1859, the French began constructing the Suez Canal, which will connect the Mediterranean and the Red Seas, thus eliminating 8,000 nautical miles of sea travel, including sailing around the notorious dangerous Cape of Africa. The Suez Canal becomes a hugely financial and shipping success. Later, it would become a vital passageway for America, and the Allied warships during World War I and World War II. Next, the French would attempt to build the Panama Canal under the leadership of Ferdinand de Lesbos, the chief of construction of the Suez Canal. In the late 1880s, France presents the gift of the Statue of Liberty to the United States. The United States of America wants a Central American canal built through Nicaragua, but ultimately sides with the French. A successful Panama Canal would eliminate 7,900 nautical miles and three weeks of travel by avoiding sailing around South America. The construction of the Panama Canal proves to be a tremendous disaster for France, 
in the loss of 22,000 human lives and financial bankruptcy. Once again, the United States of America comes to the aid by buying the French holdings of land and equipment at a price of $40 million. The United States completes the Panama Canal in 1914. During the late 1900s and the early part of the 20th century, France begins a large-scale colonization of Northwest African countries. They grow in mineral, material, and financial wealth. Unfortunately, their lack of attention of European affairs, particularly the rise of Germany, proves to be their undoing. And an unforeseen association with Belgium, their invasion of the Congo, led to the largest deposit of uranium ever discovered. The United States of America refines the uranium to produce the atom bombs used on Japan. Next, World War I breaks out and France is subdued by Germany. Again, the United States comes to the aid by entering the war. The American forces are led by General John Blackjack Pershing who came to fame with his successful leadership during the Indian Wars. Publicly, he is referred to as Black Jack, but privately, he is referred to N-Word Jack because of his use and support of Negro troops, a.k.a. the Buffalo Soldiers. The United States efforts ensure the victory of the Allied forces in World War I. Germany was destroyed. The country's next series of tanks would be named Persians, as well as the first class of intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles, Persian rockets. In 1939, World War II begins with Germany invading and occupying France. The United States of America ultimately enters the war on the side of the Allies. They conduct the largest seaborne invasion in world history with D-Day on June 6, 1944 in Normandy, France. It becomes the turning point in the war and once again, the United States has saved its big brother. We move to Southeast Asia and the country known as Indochina, modern day Vietnam. The French invade and colonize the country in the 1880s. The country is rich in material reserves such as coal, tin, copper, rice, but most of all, it's rubber trees. With the emergence of the automobile industry in the early 20th century, Indochina becomes a gold mine for France. Numerous vehicle tire companies of the world would set up shop. However, the largest would be Michelin. Interestingly, during the Vietnam War, no rubber plantations were destroyed. After World War II, the communist leader, Ho Chi Minh, would rise to power in the now known Vietnam and fight for its independence from France. After six decades of rule, the French are defeated. France cries out to his brother, the United States, for help in an attempt to rescue France. The United States embarks on the worst military decision made in its history. In 1965, the United States of America helps create South Vietnam and attempts to rid it of Ho Chi Minh's communist desires for it and the neighboring Southeast Asian countries, including Cambodia and Laos. The Vietnam War begins. The Vietnam War becomes the most divisive period in the United States since the Civil War. Its devastation, its unequal treatment, its flat-out lies produce repercussions which remain to this day. The devastation is the majority of the country does not want to enter a war to defend France or create the potential for nuclear war. Unequal treatment, the poor, working class, 
and black citizens are disproportionately represented as draftees and sent to Vietnam, while college students who mainly come from the middle class and rich are provided with educational and or medical deferments to avoid military service. In addition, up to 30,000 white males flee to Canada and are given refuge. The nuclear threat. Both China and the Soviet Union enter the war on the side of the communist North Vietnamese. It becomes apparent to the citizens of the United States of America that the war is not winnable. What further exacerbates the war effort is when it is discovered that the United States of America has flooded the country with heroin. The United States Congress has passed legislation forbidding funding of military operations in Cambodia and in Laos. Secretly, heroin is shipped into the country and sold with its profits being used to fund illegal military operations. Hollywood produces a box office smash movie entitled Air America, which details the methodology. Interestingly, in the 1980s, it was believed the same method was used to fund illegal military actions in Central America due to communist threats. However, this time, the drug's name was cocaine. In 1973, the Vietnam War ends with the communist Vietnamese in victory. The Vietnam War to date is the only war the United States has ever lost. The cost of the war is incalculable. 58,300 dead. Over 300,000 physically injured. And the psychological damage inflicted on military personnel and their family is an amount too much to measure. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter approves amnesty for all U.S. citizens who have fled to Canada effectively ripping the scab off an unhealed American wound. In 1986, the United States launched a military strike against Libya and its leader, Muammar Gaddafi, in response to bombings at the Rome and Vienna airports, along with a German nightclub, which killed Americans. The United States requests the use of French air bases and clearance to fly over French airspace. France refused both requests, fearing terrorist attacks in reprisal. Many Americans were extremely angered by the French's decision, which forced U.S. fighter jets to fly an additional 2,600 nautical miles from and back to England's Air Force bases, including several dangerous mid-air refuelings. France, since that decision, has participated in numerous military campaigns with the United States, including efforts in Bosnia, both Iraqi wars, Afghanistan, and the fight against terrorism, mainly in Southwest Asia, commonly known as the Middle East. Well, in the final analysis, France, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. Thank you for listening to the True Sarah Report. France and the United States, the Brotherhood, hosted by Jeffrey Hawkins. I would like to end my podcast with a quote from a great American writer, Toni Morrison. Want to fly? You have got to give up the stuff that weighs you down. Speak to you soon.